Reddit is the place you go when you feel a little too confident in yourself and you want the internet to bring you back down to ground level, specifically roast me. But what happens when you feel that same way about your car and you want people to bring you down and you want the gearhead community to remind you you're not all that special? Roast my this is a fantastic subreddit that I found at the same time I was recording my other video where people roasted my appearance and my selfie. <laughs> Almost exactly one day ago, I submitted this lovely picture of my 1990 Pathfinder with the caption, at least it's a manual. Now if you don't actually care about the details of this particular vehicle, my vehicle in particular, go ahead and go to this timestamp and you can get right into the roasts. But if you do care, here's the basics. This is a 1990 model Nissan Pathfinder SE V6, manufactured at the Kyushu plant. And for 29 years old, the paint is phenomenal and it's virtually rust free. It's a WD21 body style, which is basically just an SUV version of the D21 Nissan Datsun mini truck. Now, back in those days, Nissan actually marketed this vehicle as a Z4 off road, probably just because it came in two door configuration and had a similar short block to the 300ZX sports car. When mine was new, it had a Nissan branded winch hanging off the front bumper guard, which was probably a special RPO installed at the dealer, but that unit was underpowered and overweight, so it's gone. It also had a couple fog lights down below and two spotlights with plastic grills and steel housings up on the roof. The steel light mount doubled as the light's ground. The spare tire carrier was also optional on the SEV6. The WD21 was a hard sell in Japan due to its larger size comparing to the average sedan, so much so that an additional road tax was heaved onto it. To incentivize Japanese buyers, Nissan loaded the Pathfinders with tons of standard equipment that was usually optional back in the late 80s and early 90s, especially on a small SUV. These included power windows, power locks, power mirrors, cruise control, and AC with automatic climate control, all of which mine has. My example is also equipped with a sunroof, but the cover vanished long ago with the original owner, so I use a piece of cardboard on those really hot days. Mechanically, it's not very interesting by today's standards, but in 1990, it had some cool stuff. It's got automatic locking front hubs, a 5-speed manual with a clutch start switch override, a 2-speed transfer case, the rear axle is a removable carrier style with 462 axle gears, and that technological marvel, the VG30E. It's a 60-degree overhead cam V6 with electronic port fuel injection, and it makes a brutal 153 horsepower and 180 foot-pounds of torque to lug around this almost 4,000-pound SUV. Nissan was proud to claim the title of most powerful compact import SUV, but they won't tell you that it's because it was one of the only ones with six cylinders while everyone else had four. It will make it up to 75 miles per hour, but it runs 3,100 RPM, and if it's any hotter than 80 degrees out, the cooling system starts to get nervous. With the help of some downward hills, I have gotten as good as 20 miles per gallon, but the norm is 17 on the highway and 12 around town. This is a thirsty turtle. As for the sick mods, bro, it's not much. Mostly maintenance items and parts store dress-ups, to be perfectly honest. Gone are the big stock roof lights, replaced with a basic rack from Cabela's, and parts store LEDs from Blazer bolted on the front. There are 12 LED combination spot flood pattern. It's also got a couple of KC Apollo off-road lights, the least expensive and least powerful of the KC Highlights brand. The wheels are a 15-inch American Racing AR23. No clue on the backspacing and offset because I didn't commit the crime of installing American Racings on a Nissan, but I did commit the crime of not replacing them. The tires are a 31 by 1050 15 Cooper Discoverer AT3. It's an attempted balance at off-road and highway, but it really does neither of those things well. They're fairly loud and thudding at speed, and they don't have the off-road grip to compensate. The upholstery is actually mint, so I threw on some part store saddle seat covers, and the stock shift knob was too small in my opinion, so I put on a cue ball that probably adds 10 horsepower. The stock stereo was replaced by the previous owner with a JVC which doesn't send audio to the rear speakers, something I've yet to fix. I've done zero performance mods unless you count the 2.5 inch Magnaflow, Smurf Blue NGK wires, and NGK Iridium plugs. I replaced the coil, fuel filter, air filter, distributor cap and rotor, but other than that, this pile is bone stock. It burns oil a bit and probably has some ring seal issues. The belts and a few pulleys need replaced. It weeps its fair share of fluids. It needs a clutch after I took a kid through high school before I bought it. The torsion bars need cranked down to fix that nose high stance. The rear gears have way too much backlash and it could use some suspension maintenance items. I actually haven't had this vehicle off-road as much as I'd like, which is what all 4x4 owners say, but I do plan on changing that. It has only been to um, a handful of places where I was able to get it on dirt, but on the interstate, as long as it's not really, really hot out, this thing 
will not get hot at all. I can run it with the AC on at 70 miles an hour all day long and it doesn't even waver the needle. So in light of that, let's get it good and toasty by going on Roast Me. This post is currently sitting at number two and it's been there for a full 24 hours almost. Wow, 4,000 in aftermarket wheels, tires, lights, roof rack, and grill guard on an $1,800 bucket? You really think I'd pay four grand for those cheap dress ups? Come on, dude. And don't tell me you get above 10 miles per gallon because I won't believe you. I actually got 20.01 miles per gallon once, and I haven't been able to replicate it since. <laughs> Period correct KC is on the front, but you ran out of alternator and had to throw some LEDs from Harbor Freight on the rack, hence ruining the aesthetic. I do admit that there's some cognitive dissonance as far as the, the good looking big round KC's up front. But they're not even, they're not daylighters, they're just the generic part store Apollo KC lights. They're nothing special, so I feel like it doesn't really matter. This one I really liked, goes off-roading once, so much that I responded to it with, tries flexing suspension on hand-shoveled snowbank at Taco Bell, gets stuck. Which I have seen. This is something that's so funny to me because in the town I live in, there are so many trucks that are jacked up to the sky, just lifted way up high, with lift kits that you know had to cost quite a bit. And they're on these massive, like, 40-inch super swampers and mud terrains. And you know those things have never seen a lick of actual real trail in their life. They just put around on dirt roads and occasionally go into the field once in a while. I refuse. I refuse to roast you. I miss mine every single day. That is something that I've noticed. The WD-21 Pathfinders were based on the D-21 mini truck, which is the Nissan Datsun mini truck of that era, the hard body mini truck. And the people who own D-21s or have owned D-21s, they're very passionate about them. They really like their cars. They really like their, their vehicles. Get out of the left lane though, I know you can't beat 70. Ooh, someone on here had a 92 Forerunner. Ah yes, all the off-road capabilities of a Toyota Tercel? Must have been really fun that time it ran. When I drove the Pathfinder up to South Dakota for our Black Hills trip, I was having this horrible issue where you would be going along in the interstate just fine, it would be running perfect, and then you'd clutch in to slow down, and it would just die. And then occasionally it would have a really bad miss, like it, it felt like a really bad misfire where the whole thing was shaking and it just was running terribly. It felt like it was running on five cylinders. I finally discovered that it was just a bad fuel filter and a one bad plug wire. I mean, yeah, you, you gotta have one redeeming quality. I mean, at least it's a manual. People who own manuals, you know, you know you're proud of it. Maybe you shouldn't be, but you're proud of it. What is Radwood? Do I even want to know? What the heck is this? Should I Google this? Do I want this on my... Oh. Uh, you can't call it a manual just because you end up pushing it more than it actually drives. That's not what manual means. Now that's funny. It's not a... It, it's pretty much the same thing, yeah. Look, it's not a forerunner, okay? It's it's kind of like pe people have called the, my Pathfinder a Jeep before. It's 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 like anything anything that looks remotely off-road, it's either a Jeep or a forerunner. There's, there's no other vehicle out there. <laughs> it's like Kleenex and Band-Aid. No competitive brands. Only two doors, because for usable space. Fun fact, the two-door and four-door Pathfinders have the exact same wheelbase. The only difference is the windows and obviously just an extra door there. And because of that, for a two-door SUV from the 90s, it has amazing rear legroom. But it is just a pain in the neck trying to fit stuff in there. It'd be so much easier if I could just open up another pair of doors and just shove stuff in that way. I've never seen or heard of one of these in my life. Looks like a square body blazer. Did you just say a square body blazer? By square body blazer, do you mean like a K5? Did you just call a square S10 blazer a square body? That's the best looking Pathfinder I've seen, to be honest. I don't think you understand how this works. And props for actually knowing how to drive a manual. I'm just assuming you know how to drive a manual. It being a Pathfinder, it may just be a lawn ornament. <laughs> KC Lights tractor tires. It's a life-size Hot Wheels car for some dumb rich kid. Needs those jagged, weird, incredible stock rims to be at all interesting, that is. 
do people like those the stock like the it's, it's like a three three spoke looking i i did not like those at all they're hideous that is a good looking nissan and that's not a roast at least it's got the cheapest options again like i said fairly loaded but by today's standards <laughs> it's all fun in games until you try to go around a corner this thing has front and rear sway bars i, I think it has rear last time i last time i checked I think it has rears. I can't remember exactly, but I think it has front and rear sway bars, and it still tosses like a dump truck going into corners. It's really bad. Maybe I have a broken link, a broken end link. That would make sense. Maybe I should look at. <laughs> Maybe I should look into that. Manual. That's a pretty good name for an auto. My truck is a Juan. A lot of the WD21s were automatics, I think. I can't find production numbers anywhere, but I don't think they sent a lot of the, that body style Pathfinder to the States, optioned like this, with all with the bells and whistles and red two-door SEV6 with all the all the good stuff they had back then. I don't think there's a whole lot of them running around here in the States. Stupid <laughs> shrimp basket. That is what I'm calling that now. It's my shrimp basket. Thank you so much. I'm upvoting you because now I will forever call that a shrimp basket. I like how there are two comments up here saying that this is one of the prettiest Nissans they've ever seen. Then you got to this one. I gotta say, this is one of the ugliest vehicles in the world. The shape of these are so off you couldn't even figure out how to fit the windows on. As a result, you have a bunch of different shapes and sizes and none of them look right. My least favorite part of this car would have to be the triangle window in the middle. What is the point of that? Well, it's a vent window. Manuals are commonplace in most countries. Being one doesn't make it special. Well, here in Colorado, in the United States of America, no one cares about manuals anymore. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool. I daily for sure. I can't. She's too beautiful. Stop complimenting it. You say manual like it's a good thing. Where do all of you stand on that? What happened to my voice? Where do you all stand for that? Where do you guys all stand in the whole manual versus automatic thing? I like driving a stick. I, I really do like it. When you drive it enough, it doesn't feel like you're doing anything special. It just becomes so natural. I think anyone who's driven a stick um, as a daily for any, any stretch of time can tell you that there has been some point where they get into an automatic and they hit the they, they hit the floorboard where they think the clutch pedal should be. It's just a reaction. It just becomes it, it doesn't feel like you're working twice as hard. But on the same side, people who have daily manual transmission vehicles in their life, none of them can say that they would prefer a clutch in traffic. And if you do, you are a liar. <laughs> So that was Roast, my 1990 Nissan Pathfinder. That was really good. Um, 71 people came out to all collectively take a dump right on my windshield. If you're not in the automotive community or you're not a gearhead online, then you might not know that gearheads can be some of the most aggressive, passive aggressive people on the planet. Um, as far as brand loyalty and the likeness goes, they can be some of the most brutal people in an argument you will ever have the chance to meet, and I got to ex exposed to that very early on. Some of the first times I got, I saw comment battles on YouTube was in like 2009 when I was just watching a random video and people were just arms and fists in the comments. Arms and fists is not a saying, but it is now. <laughs> Again, if you're new to Roast My Car or Roast Me, the more popular one, this is all in good fun. The thing that I said before, and I'll say again, is you're, when you're roasting someone on here or you're roasting someone's car, it's as if you're playing to a crowd and the person or the vehicle you're roasting, the owner is in on the joke. Nothing is to be taken seriously. I like this thing though. I, I like my Pathfinder. I fully realize that it looks way too overwrought um, with the rack and the lights and everything, but I put the, all of those, all that stuff on there for a reason. I like camping, I like exploring, and I, whenever I do things, I try to do them as practical as possible. So that was Roast My Nissan Pathfinder. I uh, hope you all had a great time enjoying this. And I know that if any of you comment, you will continue the roast well beyond this subreddit. So make sure that you do comment, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. It really helps me out. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you check the description for more links to videos that I've done, and I will see all of you next time.